Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we'd have a quick look at this. A friend of mine dropped this round um, earlier on and basically what he said happened was it was on um, the other night and um, he went to try and switch it and there was a big bang came from it and um, the bulb felt all funny and it wouldn't work and I said I'd take a quick look at it for him. It's a um, it's a lamp that's made um, a pottery, I mean it's gone now, but it was a um, small pottery that's reasonably local to us up in um, Dob Cross. It was um, Hobson Pottery. Like I, said, I think this is about 30 years old, he's had it for quite some time. And he, he would quite like to have it um, working again. The only thing is he doesn't really like the fact that the switch is there, because it has quite a large shade on it. And before now he's actually been to switch it off and on and caught his hand on the shade and actually knocked the uh, lamp onto the floor. It's actually got a chip in it there where that's happened. There's another, yeah, there's another chip there, there's a chip there and this is where it's... Because it has quite a large shade on it like that and it's quite tricky to get to that um, switch. So what I thought I'd do is we're going to um, replace that. I mean, there's obviously something wrong with that switch. I mean, I have had this um, apart already I think what happened I've already had this out I think what happened is um, there's basically meant to be a little piece of mica inside there which um, actuates the um, switch contacts and I think it broke and that's why it went with a terrific bang because it actually when it broke the spring one of the springs actually shorted uh, between the two poles there and obviously got two 40 volts across the spring and it just went bang uh, because the switch doesn't actually do anything at all anymore and actually when I took this out one of the pins in there just just fell out of it so that is obviously all that scrap so I had a rummage in my um, bits box and I've got basically it's the same thing it's the same kind of lamp holder um, bayonet style lamp holder um, the only difference is this doesn't actually have a switch on it it is the correct thread to thread into the um, base we've got on the lamp there there we are. So it does actually um, it does actually fit correctly. So we're going to fit that and um, for switching. Like I said, because he uh, was didn't like that idea. I've got a um, just a little in line lamp switch there. Which we'll, we'll, these are cheap Chinese ones, but I'll show you how you can actually use these and be relatively safe with them. Um, out of the box, these they're horrendous. Um, they, I won't consider them safe, but it doesn't take much to actually make them. Uh, to make them safe, um, especially because this is going to be, it's well with an LED bulb in it, it's going to be pulling virtually nothing. Um, so the actual switch in there will be fine. Right, uh, first thing we need to do then, I think the first thing I'm going to do, I'll take the wiring out of here. We'll, uh, we'll pull the wiring out of here. Get rid of that nut. And he did ask me whether there was anything I could do about these chips. And I did have a look to see if I got any green um, enamel that I could um, touch them in with. And I don't. But what I do have is some um, green conformal coating. <laughs> and actually, if you look, it's a very, very, very similar um, colour green. So I'm wondering where I can actually use this just to disguise um, some of those chips. I think I'll do that first. We'll cure that and we can set it to one side and then we'll have a look at um, sorting the wiring out. Um, I'll get this conformal coating. I'll get a little bit on um, on this board I've got here. I can't remember how you get this stuff out now. I think, oh, that's it. Yeah, we'll get a tiny bit of that out there. Put that away again so I don't mess it up. I've got my little um, conformal coating brush here. We'll get some on there, like that. It's like really thick, gloopy stuff, this, so I don't think you'll need very much. Well, let's just see if we can uh, 
we can disguise. Oh, that's actually working very well. Just see if I can paint in with this, that um, bit of damage. Where was the other one? It's a bit down there. And that's not as noticeable because it's right on the bottom, but let's see what we can do. Touch that in. And there was another bit there, yeah, right near the uh, name there. Let's try that. There we go. And obviously we need some uh, UV to uh, cure this. I don't think it needs very much from what I uh, remember when I was playing about with this before. Let's try that. Where's the other one? There's one there, isn't there? I did. And then there's the big one on the top, that big chip there. So we'll hold the, uh, the UV on that for a minute. I mean, it won't disguise the fact that the enamel's actually chip, but it's just not quite as noticeable now as that great big um, white chunk you could see. In fact, that's actually, um, that's actually covered really nicely. Leave that now. We'll leave that to one side. Put that over there. Uh, yeah, we'll put it there. Put the bulb to one side. And let's take our pay our attention to the actual um, flex. First thing I'm going to do is just check the plug. I didn't wire this, so um, I just want to make sure it is actually wired correctly. First thing I always do when I get an appliance in or something in to um, repair is just to check that the plug is wired correctly and it's not bad actually. Uh, we've got the correct 3 amp fuse in there. We've got a nice short live there. But if we look the neutral is also quite short. It's just probably got about as much um, tension in it as the live there and really what we want we always want to have the live so that will always pull out as the first connector of the wire was to get yanked. So I am going to just quickly redo that. I mean, it's, as plugs I see go, that's actually pretty, you know, it's pretty good to be honest. Um, I see some absolute horrors of um, people having people have wired plugs. And the scary thing is, I don't think it's even taught anymore. I mean, I'm pretty sure, I already knew how to do it, but I'm pretty sure I got shown how to wire a plug at um, secondary school. Uh, I said I did already know how to do it, I was already doing uh, my own wiring by then, but um, that's another story. I don't believe they actually show stuff like that, I mean, they'd probably get sued if someone fried themselves or something. Right, let's get that out of there. And all we're going to do is we're going to shorten. I'm perfectly happy with the length of the neutral, but we're just going to slightly shorten the live. So we'll just cut about 5mm off it or so and re strip it. Like that. That's better. Go back in. Got a few stragglers there on the neutral. Let me just get that and retwist it. You don't want any stray strands of wire. You want to make sure your wire is always um, nicely well twisted like that before you go into the plug. Guide that in. Okay, there we go. 
And basically what we want to do, we'll get that right up there and we'll redo the cable grip. Like that. Let's get the fuse carrier out. Pull the fuse out. back in Turn that up okay there we go now that's more how it should be if you look there I'll just bring you up there we notice how we've got the uh, live is very very short and we've got a loop there on the neutral so if that wire was to get, get pulled like that the live will always pull out of the connector first, not the neutral, and that's how we always want it. The way it was before, they were both about the same length, so they'd either both pull out, or you could potentially have the uh, neutral pull out and leave the live connected, which is never a state you really want it in. So I'm happy with that now. So you, as plugs go, um, as UK 13 amp plugs go, um, that wasn't a bad one. I've seen some horrors, I've seen tinfoil where the fuse should go. Oh, I've seen them all. So we'll put that back on there now. We'll pay our attention back to the other end. And we've got where the knot is, so we know that bit of wire there is going to be right. So we want to probably come about 12 inches down from the wire there. And that's where we're going to fit this little inline um, switch. A little off on the switch like that. Um, the problem with these, like I said, these are cheap Chinese things, um, is that they just pull apart. You can literally just get hold of them and um, obviously use a screwdriver on this one, but um, there's no screws holding them together. So they do just pull apart like that and obviously expose live terminals. I don't know how, well, I know how they get away with selling them in the UK. They're um, made in China and you just buy them from eBay or AliExpress or um, somewhere like that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut into the wire. I'm just cutting into the outer insulation here. And I want to take about an inch and a half, say, of um, insulation off. So obviously you want to be careful doing this because you don't want to cut into the um, inner conductors or the inner insulation. You just want to cut this outer insulation off. There we go. Pull it back a bit now. Now we want off probably a little bit more than that. About Right, that, sh that should be enough. You don't want to take too much off because we do still want the uh, cable to grip the two cable grips on here. So we'll cut it off at that. That'll be about right. Now what we want to do is we want to leave the neutral intact and we want to cut the live, the brown one, right in the middle, like that. Now, the way that these are really designed to work is literally you put the wire in there and then just crimp them down 
I really, really don't like that idea. Uh, I don't think it makes a good enough connection, so I'll show you what I do with them. Now I've got the wire cut like that. Let's, uh, let's strip back. A bit of the insulation. Like that. And we'll twist them together. Like that. And then we're going to tin them with a bit of solder. So just bear with me because I really hope I've got some solder in this box. If not, I'm going to have to just pause the video and uh, go and get some. Yeah, um, just bear with me folks, I'm just going to have to um, quickly go and get some solder. Okay, I'm back. And I've got solder. i also got some cocktail sticks which we'll need in a minute as well, which I've also forgotten. Right, so first thing that we need to do is tin those, uh, tin those wires up. Let's clean the iron up a little bit. Using a, uh, one of my vintage irons here. Um, um, dug out my proper iron. Yeah, and brought that down. Okay, and this is perfectly good for what we're going to do. We just want to tin them two wires up. There's a solder on there. There's a solder on there, a bit more. Okay, there we go, they're nicely tinned up. Now what I want to do, take the wires, And basically what slip it through the crimp point there on the switch then you just need something um, basically flat to crimp that down I will use the end of some pliers as soon as I've found them or a flat blade screwdriver anything like that will do They should do it. But you just hold that in like that. Make sure that the tin part's in the bit you crimp down. And just give it a good with a pair of pliers and it'll crimp it down like that. And do the other side. Just bend the wire. Get it between the uh, between the crimps like that. It'll go in. Get your thing on it and push down. Give it a and that'll lock the crimp in place. Like I said, but I don't like them. I don't like them at all. That's literally what you're meant to do with them. You don't. I don't think you're meant to um, tin the wire. You're just meant to push the wire in there and just smash them down like that and it just crimps it in place. Uh, what I like to do now is, but you need a really hot iron, nice, uh, this is a thing that's about 40 watt. And it only looks a small iron but it is quite a, because uh, it's a vintage old iron, it was designed to work on, you know, valve circuits. I think it's from the 60s this. Um, it does get, it does get really hot really quick and what we want to do is really quickly just solder those in place. So just go on top of the contact, add some solder, and that's it. You have to be faster or else you're going to melt the plastic. We'll do this one now, and that's why I like to tin the wire first, because once you've tinned the wire, it, um, once you've tinned the wire, it um, takes the solder much, much easier. And we'll go in there. That's it. If you're any faster, if you're any slower than that, you'll um, you'll start melting the um, melting the plastic. Right, let's just make sure that's okay. Yeah, that's nice and all right. Now what we want to do, basically, we want to fold that in there like that, so it's actually going to be held down flat. And what I do now, let's get this bit of board in. 
One nice thing about just doing um, the laminate floor in here is I've got lots and lots and lots of offcuts of um, laminate floor in like this and they're great for like mixing um, adhesives and anything like that on and then when they're messed up you can just throw the things away. We'll take a little bit, this is a rapid set um, epoxy. We'll take a little bit of that. There we go. I'll we'll probably use a little bit more resin in there. Put a tiny bit too much hardener there, that should be enough. I want to mix them two up. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of that. I'm going to put some on the wire and on the card grip there. Same that side. Just a little bit of um, the epoxy on there. We'll take some more. And on the four pins that hold the top on, we'll just put a little bit of the epoxy on the four pins like this. Just like that. I need a little dab on each one. Because basically all you want to do, you, you're just making sure that this thing can't easily be um, pulled off and the wires are not going to be able to be pulled out. Push that down now, nice and firm. Make sure that, that clips into place. There we go. There we are. That's a snap. And that's snapped into place there. That'll work nicely. And once that epoxy's gone off, there is no way that those wires are going to yank out. That's like I said, that's the main problem with these switches. They are really, really flimsy as you buy them. And they do have the potential that uh, well, like I said, if a child was to get hold of it, they'd be able to pull the top off it and there's live contacts exposed straight inside like that with that bit of epoxy on all four um, points and a bit of epoxy just where the wires go in like that like I said that is now as far as I'm concerned quite safe so at least as safe it's as safe as it um, can be right and plus the chap that um, owns this you know he's, uh, he's not an idiot and he's um, not about to start yanking on the uh, yanking on the wires Right, we can put that back in there now. I'll put the safety nut back in. Just strain relief to stop the, um, the cable being pulled through the base. That, that way is still good there. I can feed that back through the base of the lamp, up like that, make sure these are alright, yeah they're still, the ends are still good from the older connector so we don't need to strip that back, that's fine, just need to connect the new, uh, the new lamp holder, obviously you don't have a live and a neutral on these, they can go in either way around, so we just put that through, tighten it up, and then the other side you want to do the opposite, so we've gone that way on that side there, on the other side you want to put it in the other way, I'll show you why in a second, so that goes through there, Tighten that up. And then for strain relief, basically there's some little hooks on either side of the uh, lamp holder. So you need to get make sure the wire goes round that one into that hook. Then bring the other end round. This can be a little bit tricky. Let me 
it should be just enough length on these to do it but basically hook that in and over on that side let's get you up and over there we are like that and you can make that out so basically it's hooked around on that side there you can see there and then the opposite side is hooked around there like that so that basically it acts as a strain relief again now we can put that back in there and screw it down and to allow that wire to just twist round really so basically hold it from the bottom as well and get this get the twist so it comes out of the side of the uh, lamp like that you don't want to get that wire to twist up in the base because you'll cause problems again so as you tighten that up twist the wire as it comes out and like that it's not going to all screw up in the bottom of the uh, lamp holder there and potentially uh, break one of the connections so you can see I've pulled that round and as I've twist as I've tightened that up I've allowed it to spin there and spin there so it's not all twisted and knotted up in the bottom of the lamp holder last final turn just to make sure that's locked in place and there we go that's repaired so as you can see that's where the uh, let me show you there that's the uh, repair to the chip there with the uh, conformal coating that's actually done a really really nice job of disguising that and again one on the bottom there that's hidden and there was another one there that's also hidden that one on the top there has actually come out really really nicely so and we've got our new inline switch now to switch it off and on let's uh, give it a final try put the new bulb in well the bulb back in the new holder we'll plug it in and we'll see what happens Plug in and switch on. We'll try the uh, we'll try the new switch. I think that bulb's gone. <laughs> uh, just bear with me, folks. Let me just um, see if I've got a new bulb. I think that bulb must have uh, must have popped. Yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't the bulb. It was the fuse. Um, Remember how I said he told me it went off with a bang? Well, yeah, and we didn't check the fuse, did we, when we was in the plug before? That's a um, mistake on my part. So let's pull that blown fuse out. Put a known good 3 amp fuse in. Make sure that goes in properly. Bulb back in. Let's plug back in. Oh. And let's try again. There we go. So that's the um, new inline switch, which you can uh, you appreciate is going to be a lot better for him than trying to have to fiddle about underneath the um, shade to, uh, to switch it off and on. And we've um, improved the appearance of it, repairing those little. Um, chips in the uh, chips in the glaze. And I know there's proper ways of doing it. Um, I have done chip repair on um, ceramics before, and painted them in and painted the false glaze over the top and what have you. But I mean, this isn't anything that's of any real value. Um, it just it's something that he likes and uh, wants back on his sideboard. So. Uh, I think touching them in like that was probably the best thing to do. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. It was just a quick little video, um, to show a quick little uh, repair of something. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.